Quiet, please. Quiet, please. QuietPlease.org presents Quiet Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper, and which features Paul Nero. Quiet Please for tonight is called Motive. Wonder how hot it is. It's Cabo Dura forecast for New York City and vicinity. 8 p.m. temperature, 91 degrees. Humidity, 87%. Barometer, 29.83 fallen. Tonight, continued hot and humid. Highest temperature in the mid 80s. Tomorrow continued sunny and warm with high humidity. Highest temperature in low 90s. Scattered thunder showers. Oh, I sure picked a fine night for it. Oh well. Maybe we can go out to some air conditioned place when she gets here. Wish she would get here. Wish that kid had shut up. Or a little breath, though. Guess the heat's got it, too. Hello? Oh, hello, her. Yeah, I just came back in for a day or so. Huh? No, I'd like to, but I can't. I'm tied up. No, Marge is coming. That's right. I don't know. We're just going to talk it over. Yeah, I hope so too. I'll see you. Thanks for calling. Bye. Hurry up, Marge. I'll be awful glad to see you, honey. I didn't realize. Kid, please shut up. Huh. How am I doing? I didn't realize how tough it was going to be without you, Marge. I got to tell you that, Marge. I got to make you understand it somehow. Gee, baby, I'll sure try. I'll hang up my coat when I come home. I'll hang up the towels in the bathroom. I'll put my shaving brush away. And I'll take you out to dinner twice. No, no three times a week. Oh, Marge, let's make a goal of it this time. Gee, it was so wonderful once. And you got so screwed up. It was all my fault, Marge. Wasn't it? <sighs> Remember when we first came here? Riding on the Staten Island Ferry that first night? I remember what you said, Marge. You were so happy. I'm so happy I could bust. I remember. Don't you bust here, I said. What'd you think if I did bust? I'd bust too. Just as simple as that. I wouldn't be worth a nickel without you, Marge. Honest, Al? You mean that, honey? Cross my heart, I mean it. Listen, I'm scared already of this town. What are you scared of? Well, baby, it's awful big and it's awful fast. Not too big for you, hon. I'm not so sure. Not too fast for you either. Marge, it won't be if you... If I what? If you... If you just stick with me. I mean, if you... You know what I mean, Marge. I... This... Everything I want to do, I want to do it for you. Oh, do you, darling. I remember how we stood there in the dark that night, such a long time ago, looking back at the lights, 
foam spreading out behind the boat as we sailed along. And you reached out your hand to me like you used to, and the way your eyes were shining. And you took a step toward me, and I put out my arms to you. The way some people take care of their kids. Where the dickens is she? She's never been on time in her life. Good evening. Uh, 506, please. One moment, please. Letting me sit around in a hot apartment all night. Kid yelling in my ears. Hello? 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 506 does not answer. What? Where is she? 506 does not answer. Thank you. Oh my gosh! Hey, would you mind doing something about that child, please? Would you mind your own business? Listen. Well, that's a relief. Darn it, I wonder where Marge is. Well, if she didn't answer me, she must be on the way. It's only 10, 12 minutes to cab. She ought to be right here. If she didn't. <laughs> Listen to that. Margie, I'm always thinking of you, Mar. You don't play very well, bud. It's a G natural, Mac. That's better. Wow, it's hot. Oh my lord. I'll get a drink of water. Ah. No ice. I don't know how the dickens she can do a thing like that. Oh, no, by gosh, I did that myself. I remember when I left. Will you stop that... that... piano playing? Will you? Oh, the... he can't hear me. Well, maybe Marge will like it when she gets here. It's a good gag. Keep it up, Mac. I'll go nuts before she gets here, though. Hello? Give me the cocktail lounge. Probably stopped out fast nip first. Hello? This is Al Bessemer. Is my wife there? Is uh, has she been in tonight? Okay, thanks. I wonder where the devil she can be. She said she'd be here at 8. It's 8.15, 17 now. I wish she... Well, thanks, Mac. We get this thing straightened out, we're going to move out of here. Yeah, I'd just forgotten about that. I wonder what that guy does. Sounds like pounding on pipe or something. You'd think you get in a halfway decent neighborhood, you'd be entitled to peace and quiet once in a while. But it sounds like the Battle of the Bulge. Hey, put out that pounding. That's telling them, fat lady. Yes, sir, Marge, we're going to get out of this place just as soon as... You wanted a place out in the country, I remember. 
You said the city was getting you down. The city's got me down, Al. I remember what I said. I said we'll get a place out in the country one of these days, huh? As soon as I'm making a little more money, we'll go right out and get us a little cottage all covered with vines and mortgages, I said. And you didn't think that was funny? You didn't laugh? We can afford it, Al. My goodness, look at the Briggses and the Burgeons and all the rest. They've got a place in the country, and I bet neither of them makes any more money than you do. Well, I don't know. It's quite an investment, Marge. We'd spend a lot less out there, honey. I suppose... Wait till I get my next trace. Al, do you have any regard for me? Huh? For you? Why, sure I have. Look, Al, you and I aren't getting any younger. Look at me. I got crow's feet. I got wrinkles on my forehead. Well, look at me. I am looking at you. You said the city wasn't going to get you down, Al. And I said it wasn't going to get me down either. But look at us. Both of us. Uh, Let's have a glass of beer and forget it. That's what you always say. What's the matter with beer? You never used to drink before we came here. Now, don't start that. Al! Well? I hate you! And I hate you! And I'm gonna leave! Go on and leave. I will! Go on. I will! And don't come back! Oh, Al! Cut it out! Ah! Oh, Marge! Marge, what did I ever do that for? Marge, when you come home, I'll tell you I love you. I'll show you I love you. I'll never treat you that way again. I promise I'll be good to her. I'll never say a cross word to her. Just let her come back. Let us be happy again. Oh, it's so hot. I wish we had an electric fan here. That's the first thing I'll get for you, Marge, just as soon as we get started again. An electric fan, and then move to the country. Oh, that baby! No wonder Marge was irritable all the time. Pianos, and people pounding, and that kid. I never noticed the kid so much before, though. But Marge, here all day by herself, with that going on, Hot weather and humidity and noise. And I'm sitting in a nice cool office. The only noise there is the telephone once in a while. No wonder she left. I wonder if anything happened to her. We better phone again. No, she'll be here right away. Oh my gosh, it's a wonder she didn't go crazy. Ah, there she is. Well, nope. Who? Who? There's no Miss Pride here. You've got the wrong number. Where is she? Maybe she decided not to come. Maybe she is done with me. Maybe... Hey, maybe my watch is slow. Let's see. When you hear the signal, the time will be 8.21 and one quarter. When you hear the signal, the time will be 8.21 and one half. 8.21. She said she'd be here at 8. What do I do if she doesn't come? Oh, she's got to come. Marge, Marge, please come home. If you don't come home, Marge, I'll... You'll feel awful funny if you come here a week from now and find me. Oh, stop talking like a silly fool. Stop talking to yourself. She acted alright on the phone. 
She wasn't mad. She even laughed a little bit. She was... She sounded as if she was lonesome, too. She said she'd talk it over. Yes, I'd be willing to talk it over, I guess, Al. Yeah. I miss you so much, honey. Do you? I can't tell you how much. Did you send your blue suit out to be cleaned? I haven't been to the apartment. Well, I just hoped you didn't send it out again, because I stopped by last week and I sent it out. Oh, Marge, did you? And I stopped the papers. I forgot about that. There was a stack of morning papers two feet high in the hall. I'm sorry, Marge. I always forget things. I know. If you'll just come back, honey, I promise you I'll never forget anything again. I've heard that before. I know, Marge, but this time's different. I've heard that too. I mean it, Marge. Yeah? I do. Honest, I do. Will you, Marge? Well, I'll come and talk it over with you anyway. Oh, Marge, I love you. You said that before. Do do you love me, Marge? Marge? A little bit, please? I'll tell you when I see you. When, um... Well... Um, Monday night, maybe. What time? Eight o'clock. Oh, Marge. Marge. Thank you. Thank you. Marge? Yes, A.L.? Marge, tell me you love me a little. Marge, please? Tell me you love me just a little. A.L.? Will you cut that out? I'll go crazy if you don't get here pretty soon, Marge. Oh, Marge, please hurry. Kid, stop! 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 Will you choke that brat or something? I'm going nuts up here. Oh, thank you. Hello, Mr. Bessemer. Here's a suit that was sent out to be cleaned. It's been downstairs for a week. I took good care of it for you. Alright, thanks. I think your wife sent it out, huh? Gee, it sure is hot, ain't it, Mr. Bessemer? Hottest day in 12 years, it says in the papers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awful lot of humidity, too. Yeah, here. Good night. Good. Blue suit. What do I want with... Oh, that's the one Marge sent out. Oh, the nice suit. (laughs) Thank you, Marge. Gee, we'll put you in the closet. There you are, blue suit. Uh, Marge didn't take all her clothes. Here's her green dress. That's the one I always liked. Gee, I'll never forget the first time you wore that. That was the day we went to Riverview Park with Hansons. Poor old Red Hanson. Gee, they were so happy together that day, and Hilda liked this dress so much. And we used to say nobody was as happy together as the Hansons. And what a witch that Hilda turned out to be, running out on Red. Gosh, it sure is hot in here. Pretty green dress. Oh, Red Hanson. She sure made a bum out of him. He ought to have shot her, running out on him that way. Saw him on the street the other day. Yeah. Wonder. Marge. She couldn't be working a thing like that on me. Nah. Still, what time is it? 8.28. And she said 8 o'clock. I wonder... Well, she won't make a tramp out of me like that Red Hanson. I'll never go around putting the arm on my friends for half a dollar. Chiseling drinks. Can't hold a job ten minutes. You're not going to do that to me. I'll knock myself off first. I'll fix her. I've got that target pistol in there. 
Uh, sure, it's only a 22, but if I put the bullets in the right place, it's as good as a 45. How'd you like that, Marge? How'd you like to look at the papers tomorrow and see a headline? <laughs> headline? I'd be on page 27 next to the want ads. Al Bessemer, junior executive with an optical firm, was found dead in his apartment early today. Police said it was a suicide brought on by his wife running away from him and not coming back. How'd you like that, Marge? Well, you'll find out if you don't get here pretty soon. I had to shoot that kid first, though. And that piano player. How can people go on making the same mistakes over and over again and never doing anything about it? Marge, 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 come home. Man, I wish I had a drink. If I had a drink and Marge did come home, that'd be the thing. I would be out. She'd yell her head off. Like the time... You're nothing but an alcoholic and I'm sorry I ever married you. Yeah, an alcoholic. And the time her old man kept feeding me homemade peach brandy. Getting yourself drunk and worse than that, getting dad drunk with you. Oh, you're not so hot, Marge, sometimes. You can be as bad as Hilda Hansen, but you're not going to do that to me. But I love you, Marge. Marge, for the love of Mike, come home. Marge. Marge. Cut that out. If this keeps up, all the noise and the heat... I'm going to... Hey, you! You hear me? You cut out that noise or I'll call the police. Stop that noise! Oh, shut up. Cut it out! Cut it out! What am I going to do? Marge! Marge, please, where are you? Good evening, Graveney Hotel. 506. Oh 506 oh does not answer. Would you care to leave a message, sir? No! Message? I'll leave a message. I'll leave you a message, my dear wife, that you'll never forget. I'll leave you a message. I'll fix you. I'll leave you a 22 caliber message right through the head that you remember the longest day you live. You walk out on me, and then you promise me you'll come back. I, Marjorie, take the Albert to be my lawfully wedded husband. Marge? Marge? For better or for worse. Marge? Oh, Marge, come back. Come back, Earl. For richer or for poorer? Yeah, yeah, that's what you said. Till death do us part. I can do it. I will do it. It's too late, Marge. You've done it once too often. I know where the gun is. I can do it all right, and you'll be sorry. You'll see. You'll be sorry. Sure, it's right here. Right where it always was. This will fix her. Oh, whoops. Yeah. Oh, Lord, it's so hot. I don't want to do this, but I got to. I got to. March, I hate you. March. I'll count to ten. And if you're not here, by the time I count to ten, I'm going to do it. I'll give you ten, Marge. Ah! Oh, will you shut up? You'll be sorry. I'll make you sorry for everything you ever did to me. One. The way you spoke to me. I don't want you to drink so much because I love you. Two. Always nagging at me, wanting me to move out to the country. Three. And always wanting to have kids like that awful brat that yells all the time. Four. Threatening to leave me all the time. Five. 
and then running out on me and promising to come to talk. Six, promising saying you'd tell me whether you love me when you see me. Seven, <laughs> love me. Eight, well, I'll tell you something, Marge. I hate you. I hope you never come. I hope you... Nine. And if you did come, I'd just as soon... Al, oh Al, I'm sorry I'm so late. <coughs> Marge. Marge. Marge, darling. <laughs> The title of tonight's Quiet Please was Motive. It was written and directed by Willis Cooper, and the man who spoke to you was Paul Merrill. And Virginia Hargrove played Marge. David Feldman played the delivery man. Other voices were supplied by Pied Vert and Paul Merrill. The music for Quiet Please is, of course, by Albert Berman. Now for a word about next week, here is our writer-director, Willis Cooper. None of the characters in tonight's story were intended to represent anybody, living or dead. Next week, the third man's story. Until next week at the same time. I am quietly yours, Ernest Chapel. Quiet please come to you from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.